What's up everybody, it's UB back with another video. Today I wanted to give you a little inspiration and motivation to show you what it's like to interview for a DevOps slash cloud engineer position and land the job. Interviews are extremely nerve wracking for me, not only just in general, but because I have anxiety as well. So I've been interviewing with companies just to practice and get more comfortable. I haven't seen many actual interviews out there on YouTube for DevOps engineers, so I thought it would be cool to give you some insight into the process. The interview you're about to see is condensed because I didn't want to make a 45 minute video and drag things out too long, but this is actually the final step of the interview process with the director of engineering. At the end of the video, I'll show you actual footage of me receiving the job offer and the offer letter detailing the compensation. If you guys could, I would greatly appreciate if you like and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to make videos inspiring others to go after their dreams and succeed in life. But without further ado, let's get into the interview footage. Um, that go on within our team. Um, uh, how about you? What's uh, uh, maybe give me a little bit of your background? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm a DevOps engineer, senior DevOps engineer in my current role. Uh, I come from uh, previous positions working with the Department of Defense, um, but working with a with a small startup company um, that supported the Department of Defense in the Navy. Uh, mm -hmm. My path into tech was a little bit untraditional. I started off as a technical writer that wrote software user manuals for uh, my previous company. Uh, by virtue of that, I kind of became the subject matter expert for the application, which evolved into a QA testing position. Uh, because I was uh, pretty proficient with coding, I wrote automated testing scripts and started to facilitate the uh, DevOps process and uh, the adoption of DevOps within our organization. So that came along with, you know, setting up CI CD pipelines, um, you know, automating all the processes, continuous improvement, continuous deployment, and uh, being a champion of certain tools that I felt would uh, get us to our, our goals. So adopting like Docker and Kubernetes and uh, moving to the cloud and provisioning resources and infrastructure for, for the company. Uh, in my current position, I'm pretty much doing a lot of the same, but this time in a Google Cloud uh, environment and uh, yeah, setting up CI CD pipelines and containerizing uh, applications and being embedded within a software development team uh, to help facilitate all of their DevOps needs and provisioning environments for them. Okay. What type of applications do you support? Yeah, so they're, they're web applications built in uh, Node.js uh, for the most part, um, and uh, mostly uh, Node.js and Go as well is a lot of what our code base is comprised of. Okay. Do they, um, what are, are there any other, um, are there any other services that to go along with that, like databases or um, yeah. caching or any of those? Yeah, yeah, we use like Redis um, memory memory store for caching, um, specifically for an initiative we're doing right now for setting up an ad server to uh, cache responses from bidders in order to determine who wins advertising space on a web page, um, and then also like as far as storage, like just persistent volumes for the most most part for. Um, Images and videos and things like that. Uh, is this all in? Is this all in uh, uh, GKS or are they? Um, yes. Yeah. It's all, it some, so, okay. Yeah. It's it's all. We're a Google shop, so it's all yeah. GKS and GKE. Okay. Uh, tell me about tell me about some of the um, the CI/CD pipeline work that you you've done. Like uh, maybe give me a. A, a high level about like yeah. what automation you put in place um, and what you support there. Yeah, so uh, at my previous position, we uh, adopted Jenkins for the most part, and we uh, were figuring things out. So, uh, you know, configuring uh, web hooks basically to our Bitbucket repository to trigger and uh, kick off jobs. We initially weren't using um, the Groovy language that Jenkins uh, uses for their pipelines. We just installed our own scripts written in PowerShell in order to build the application. 
Um, that was a desktop application at the time, so C++. And uh, so we would initiate the, the build process, you know, uh, getting all dependencies, uh, compiling it in CMake, and testing using uh, testing tools like Jest, um, and then installing certain components in our pipeline for linting like SonarCube. Um, and for compliance purposes, uh, we use the anchor, anchor scanning to uh, identify vulnerabilities, which would, depending on pass or failure, would be escalated to the security team in order to determine you know, what need to be, what steps need to be taken in order to resolve it. Um, and then the deployment step were based on the results of the previous tests were you know, building the container, um, pushing it to an image registry, um, which was uh, ECR at the time. At my current position, we pushed to a Quay repository for Red Hat images, and we're deploying that via Helm to uh, our Kubernetes clusters. Okay. What, uh, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced with um, moving from Jenkins to GitHub actions? Yeah, so honestly, I feel like Jenkins didn't have a lot of, because we, we were using traditional Jenkins, so there weren't a lot of the nice built-ins that we had with GitHub Actions for doing things like just pulling images or uh, setting up Vault uh, in order to ingest secrets in our pipeline. There's a lot of um, third-party plugins that were being used in Jenkins, and a lot of times those things can be very uh, fragile and they could break or lose support, at which point our pipelines become very fragile. So uh, I, I wouldn't say that there was a inherent challenge in migrating from Jenkins. I think that the reason that we migrated from Jenkins was because uh, we saw that our pipelines were pretty brittle and we got a lot, of, uh, a lot more performance out of moving to GitHub Actions using dedicated runners um, and, and more ephemeral builds that cleaned up a lot a lot uh, nicer, so reduce the overhead and maintenance for us in terms of troubleshooting um, when things went wrong with pipeline builds. So you think so? GitHub Actions and you know that framework is it was a lot more stable than Jenkins. In my opinion, yeah, I, I believe that it was just because there were there were issues that we had like when trying to build containers in Jenkins. Um, like just random failures with like process IDs and stuff that were not generating properly. Um, and it, 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 could, it could have been based on the nodes that we had at the time in our cluster because we had our Jenkins, um, our own Jenkins like cluster. It could have been the resources at the time, but um, we kind of started everything uh, fresh with a, a new node and uh, provisioned, you know, appropriate CPU and memory for these new services and implemented some nice things like auto scaling and being able to scale vertically whenever the, the node was being um, overwhelmed. So I think that helped with processes a lot um, and, re and reduced a lot of the failures and intermittent failures that we saw. Yeah, I remember, I haven't used Jenkins in a while, but I remember the I think when you run a, you go on the Jenkins server, you'd have a, a stuck build, and it'd be things like, "Well, I need to kill." I I forget all the terms. Uh, I need to kill that worker, <laughs> right? And respawn the job. Like it would just be a zombie, or, or you know, just be yeah. weird things like that that would happen with Jenkins. That's just, that's exactly uh, our experience. It was always like a running joke because it's like. Hey, it's broke. Hey, did you try like killing it and restarting it again? Like every single time, yeah. like it's the classic IT trope, you know, <laughs> restart, just power off and power back on or like delete yeah. the pod and let it, you know, spin it back up again. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah man. Uh, good news. Um, is going to be moving forward with an offer. Um, okay. I, I don't have the details yet. Um, they've got to go through the HR process and whatnot and john was actually out sick to like both thursday and friday um yeah that's but, what he was uh, saying yeah so i think mike and him got to connect this morning uh, i don't know if he's fully back in the office yet i would hope so um i think it was just like a stomach bug or something like that but um um i don't have the official numbers yet uh obviously they know your target that 140 to 145 range um 
you know, I think, you know, that, that's where I'm hoping it'll be. Um, okay. What, what we do need to be, do is uh, I'm going to send you a link with uh, their, their application. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way you can fill that out and get things rolling forward on that side. So that way they can get everything checked off and, and be able to, to, to give you the verbal. Okay. Yeah. That's, All right. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, All right, guys, so there you have it. I ended up getting a job offer for $150,000 total compensation package, including bonuses and equity in the company. Now, I do wanna be transparent and say that I have five years of experience as a DevOps engineer, and honestly, I feel like I could probably command an even higher salary than this, but I also don't want the responsibilities that come with a lead position or something that involves management, mainly because I've done that before and it was really detrimental to my mental health and I was burned out. But yeah, hopefully this video has been helpful or inspiring to some of you who are trying to break into tech. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Also feel free to comment below if you have any questions. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers this year, but I appreciate you all for watching and I'll see you next time.